participants. Hello, welcome to this Insight webinar. My name is Michel Gebbing. I'm working with Microsoft uh, at the hosting service provider team. And this session is uh, addressing the Microsoft Cloud OS and what it brings to you as a service provider, as well as the benefits uh, for your end customers. But before I'm zooming into that, let's first look at um, why end customers are moving uh, and transitioning to the cloud. So uh, <clears throat> let me, so there are bottom, basically two, um, two major trends here. The first one is that more and more devices are being used and are in use uh, by, uh, by employees. And this means that your end customers, they have a, um, there's a push for them to provide the services and, and information that they provide to their customers on more and more devices. And um, that results in the fact that more and more applications are being developed as a SaaS a software as a service application, which requires a hosting environment to, uh, to run in. So that provides uh, a great opportunity for you as a hosting service provider. Uh, because most organizations and customer organizations are not interested in um, and, and not capable of dealing with uh, hosting those applications themselves, obviously. Um, the second trend is um, the growth, the tremendous growth in, in data. And um, the growth in data provides a great opportunity to, to access that data, to, to provide insights out of that data, to provide uh, business intelligence on top of that data, to be presented back to the, uh, the customers of your end customers. Uh, but managing all of that data, storing that data, analyzing that data, that puts a big burden on, uh, on your end customers. And uh, by that, a great opportunity when you can do that on behalf of your customer. Um, and that, and uh, combined with this last element where we see that more and more of those hosted solutions um, are coming from or uh, from a limited number of vendors and customers want more and more hosted services coming from a uh, less number of uh, vendors so that uh, they don't the end customer doesn't need to integrate all these different solutions together but the hosting service provider will take care of that so <clears throat> With all these opportunities, you, you have some challenges, right? On how do you manage all these, uh, these different services? How do you manage that in a, um, a multi-tenant platform? How do you manage all the data services? How do you automate your data centers and so forth? So um, for virtualization, VMware has uh, for a very long time be, um, um, be the leading uh, um, uh, provider and um, we see that um, open source services and OpenStack specifically for managing your data center is, uh, uh, is becoming an interesting factor as well. Both of them have their specific uh, pros and cons. Um, and as Microsoft, we, we take a little bit of a, a, a different approach. Um, and that is something that we call the Cloud OS. This is something that we have announced uh, a year and a half ago. And um, the uniqueness of the cloud OS is basically that we as my, at Microsoft, we believe that customers want to move to the cloud, but they want to move to the cloud when uh, at their own pace. And also, we don't believe that customers want to move to a full public cloud ser uh, service only. We don't believe that all applications will run uh, in, in the big public cloud uh, vendors like Amazon and uh, Windows Azure. Um, and, and, and the Google services. We believe that customers want to move um, some uh, applications to, to these pu big public clouds, but we also believe that customers want to keep specific applications running in their own data center and other applications, they want to move them to a service provider. Uh, and uh, because a service provider might be able to uh, provide more customization than these uh, uh, public cloud vendors like Azure and, and Amazon. Um, local service providers might have uh, the benefit of having uh, local data centers uh, and more and more of these um, requirements and, and, and different set of uh, needs will be able to uh, satisfy by different, different clouds. 
on the uh, in in the same line we um, we enable those different clouds uh, to be consumed by uh, by the end customer but still running in a consistent experience and that means for example that <clears throat> a uh, end users will use a common identity meaning the active the user is authenticated in the active directory of the customer but still can use that um, authentication and those credentials to use the services and consume the services in Windows Azure, in Office 365, for example. Uh, but on the other hand, they can also use the same credentials to log on to the services running inside your data center. Um, and obviously the great benefit of that is if, a cust if an employee um, leaves the company, then uh, his um, account is uh, is deleted from the Active Directory environment. And as a direct result, that employee will no longer have access to all the services running across all these three different clouds. The next element here is flexible development. Um, if you have a customer that develops application uh, or if who, who is an ISV and they have developers using Visual Studio or a third party development environment, um, with through the cloud OS, uh, those developers are able to deploy the applications directly on premise, um, directly in, a, in, um, in Windows Azure, or directly to you, uh, to your data center. Um, and the, the way that that is enabled is through the integration uh, of a common API, which is basically a cons uh, the key to, uh, to this consistent platform uh, being the cloud OS. Unified management is a great, uh, a great asset and a great benefit for your end customers as well, because customers can manage the services that they have been managing in the past with System Center, and they can continue to use System Center to manage the services running in, um, in Windows Azure, as well as in your data center. Uh, integrated virtualization allows the movement and the flowing of virtual machines across all these different environments. So um, if a and a virtual machine is better off um, running in your data center than in the customer's data center, then the customer can move those virtual machines uh, as part of this consistent uh, experience. And multi-tenancy that talks all, that mainly addresses all your concerns that you as a service provider have. Uh, you want to have one platform, uh, but you want to fully isolate all the different um, services between, the, between your different customers, so your different tenants. Let's um, move on a little bit because as the hosting service provider team for uh, at Microsoft, we have provide we are providing five solution sets uh, on top of the cloud OS, and these five solution sets are uh, web hosting. And don't think of web hosting as the traditional web hosting that you've seen from us in the past with uh, IAS, the Internet Information Server. But the new web hosting is a completely new remodel remodeled service. Uh, which is basically taking the same model that uh, Windows Azure in the Microsoft data centers is using to really provide high scale um, uh, web hosting capabilities. The second service is infrastructure as a service or virtual machine hosting. Um, we have database hosting to allow you to provide dedicated as well as shared database hosting services. Uh, desktop hosting, we see a lot of opportunity a lot of demand in the market for uh, for hosted desktops um, so we provide that as a uh, as a service and lastly the traditional services i would say in the hosting space like hosted exchange sharepoint and link um, we provide that as a um, uh, as a service and when we say we provide that as a service um, we it means that we provide reference architectures as well as um, go to market support for you to bring these five solution sets to, to the hosting market. Now, um, I would say one of the clear uh, first examples of the Microsoft Cloud OS is uh, visualized by um, <clears throat> the way that we are bringing the Windows Azure environment to, to your data center. And um, what you see here is um, uh, um, the control panel for Windows Azure. Um, and um, what you see here is the number of services that are running in Azure. And what I'm showing you here next is Windows Azure Pack. Windows Azure Pack is basically the same control panel as well as the same underlying API for your customers to consume. 
um, but then not running in Windows Azure, but running in your data center. So you can use Windows Azure Pack to provide website services uh, and virtual machine services, and then some complementary services to that, um, to provide a similar experience between uh, Windows Azure and the services that your end customers consume uh, from, from your data center. Um, from an infrastructure point of view, with Windows Server 2012 R2, and System Center 2012 R2, and then the just mentioned Windows Azure Pack, um, we basically have invested tremendously uh, in you as a hosting service provider. Um, most of the benefit or most of the new, uh, or most of the investments and most of the benefits are really tying in uh, to the requirements that you as a hosting service provider has. So now with these new products, we provide true and native multi-tenancy core out of the box. Um, so you can completely isolate your different tenants uh, over a single shared platform. Um, in addition to that, we provide uh, virtual networking, um, which means, which allows your end customers to set up their virtual networks themselves, which means that customers can spin up the multiple virtual machines. They can um, uh, create those, uh, create a virtual network with all, the, all those virtual machines so that they can communicate uh, amongst each other. But then you can also, they can also set up directly themselves um, and network extensions um, to their own data center or to their own premises so that the virtual machines running in your data center are part of the network of, uh, of your end customer. With storage spaces um, and tiering, we've made huge investments in, uh, in, st in storage capabilities, providing um, a very cost effective and some like kind of storage. Um, and we're just, uh, you can just use your stand, uh, just, just a bunch of disks or JBOT as it is called, connect them to a Windows file server, um, and then provide similar kind of capabilities, extremely high throughput, uh, but at an extremely affordable price point. Um, what is also interesting is that we've made quite a lot of investments in uh, having the ability to run Linux workloads uh, inside the virtual machine. So we provide, we support uh, different uh, Linux distributions and have um, integration services for them. Um, what is also very interesting is a, a concept called Hyper-V Replica, which allows you to provide a, a service, uh, a disaster recovery service, and that disaster recovery service um, can provide two services. Um, either you can have your end customers replicating their virtual machines over to your data center, or you can replicate virtual machines running inside your data center over to your secondary data center. So to provide remote uh, um, recovery services like that. Um, there are many more services, many more investments um, that we are providing. Um, I won't go into too much detail uh, in the limited time we have right now, but um, please find, find an overview of the main uh, elements that, uh, that are available here. Now, for you to get started um, on, on the Cloud OS network, it's, we already indicated what you need to do, what you need to adopt if you want to start using the um, Windows app, um, the Cloud OS, is um, deploy Windows Server 2012 R2, um, deploy Windows Server 2012 R2, and then on top of that, you deploy Windows Azure Pack. A Windows Azure Pack is a, a, do, a free downloadable component. It's basically an ex, you can consider it as an extension to System Center. Um, and with this, you have a highly scalable multi-tenant shared platform. Uh, you, you build up a single platform and you run all these five different services on top of it. And uh, with that, here is a last slide with an overview. Uh, on how to get started on this. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, have a good day.